Hello, good evening. Welcome back to the Greek island of Idra, which, as you can see, is where we all are. This is Katsikas, a lovely bar down by the harbour. Oh, is that a seagull I can hear? <laughs> ah, ah, yes, it is. How light, lovely. <laughs> that rippling water. Now, if you'd been here uh, back in 1960, you might have seen all sorts of famous faces sat at these tables. Artists, writers, musicians, Leonard Cohen and Marianne... Ooh, Ilan. Uh, uh, you sit there. Um, uh, Axel Jensen, um, the brilliant, tragic Australian couple, um, uh, George Johnston and Charmian Clift. Um, this place has fascinating history. You might even say it has ghosts. Uh, my mum's new novel, A Theatre for Dreamers, by Polly Sampson, uh, is based uh, on this island in 1960, and to read it is to be transported there. Um, the book was released last week, and it's already had an incredible response. It's shot into the bestseller list at number two, and the reviews have basically been five stars all round. We're all very, very proud. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who, who who's bought it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm uh, I'm sorry, but I am actually going to have to read out a few excerpts from some of the reviews because they've been so fantastic. I'm not sure Barbunia is in. Barbunia, come here. <laughs> come and listen to the reviews. Come on closer. <laughs> Sit. Now listen to the reviews. Now listen, good boy. The observer says, "A theatre for dreamers is at once a blissful piece of escapism." and a powerful meditation on art, sexuality, uh, on art and sexuality. Just the book to bring light into these dark days. Cosmopolitan says, This radiant novel will transport you straight to Greece, a blessing at a time when most of us are stuck in our homes. So vivid that you can see the sun-washed white houses and blue seas, says Good Housekeeping magazine. So thank you, everyone, who bought a copy, and thanks for all your lovely, lovely comments. We'll be doing a Q&A in a few minutes, so if you have any questions, um, get them in now, and we'll try to answer as many of them as possible. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and push that little smiley face emoji thing, because we'd love to see that. Go on, push it. Push the smiley face emoji. Um, for those who didn't tune into the event last week, uh, we're not actually on the Greek island of Idra. This is just a set designed and built by Yanina and Gabriel, Gabriel. who's off camera but doing technical take, support. Come, on, take, come, on, come and take come a bow, on. Gabriel. 
Hooray! Built and designed Woo! by Gabriel and Elena. Um, we're not actually in a bar by the water. We're all under lockdown together in to England. Add in. You have to add an in. What? An in to the barn. Barn. Yeah, right. Very good. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were supposed to be putting on uh, a number of immersive events to celebrate the release of this book, but they were postponed for obvious reasons. Um, last week, we thought we'd use the set to give people a little taste of what the events will be like. Um, and we had so much fun doing it, we thought we'd just come back and do it again. Not exactly the same, there are going to be a few changes and surprises <laughs> yeah. thrown in. So, okay. welcome to Idra 1960. Let's start things off with a reading from the book. Okay, thank you very much. Um, sunshine stalks us. It binds us to the rocks, casts us in bronze. It sharpens shadows, blazes the mountains, strikes the white walls so they almost blind us. We slake our thirst with Retsina and beer, live on fruit and salad and bread. The thought of cooked food makes everyone feverish. We take long siestas among the fir trees with our many new friends and bob around in the merciful blue sea, making plans for sundown and nightfall. We hop like fleas from bed to bed. Those with houses the least number of steps up from the port find their beds get hopped in the most. Even the most disciplined among us has given up pretending to work. The revolutionary poems stay half written, paintbrushes stiffen in jars of congealing spirit, my notebook grows vague and filled with doodles. The moon rises like yeast from its bowl in the mountains. Beneath us, the rocks remain warm from the sun. The breeze is laced with pine and mountain herb and suggestion, and as I settle deeper into my crevice, the crushed leaves of rock rose as sticky with the smell of churches. These rocks and the sea belong to us once the tourists have finished with the sun and gone back to their yachts and hotels. We're all of us complicit in this freedom. There's nothing to fear. Even wicked police chief Manolis seems to have been defeated by the sheer numbers. The music is almost deafening some nights from Lagudera, where the girls in bikinis dance outside in the street. Leonard sent off the manuscript of his novel on the same day that Marianne dispatched the baby to Norway. He says it's the only copy in the world that's now winging its way on a prayer to his publisher in Canada. It appears he can think about little else but burning boats and drowned mail. He scans the horizon from his favoured rock, threading his combali beads back and forth through his fingers with a look of such anguish I can only suppose it was the I Ching told him not to make a copy before sending it. It seems like Marianne has been hiding away since getting back here from Athens without her baby. Now she and Charmian climb out of the water and stand drying off, taking turns to rub a towel through their hair. They allowed me to walk right on the plane with him, Marianne saying as I stand at the edge and pull off my dress, look around and decide nobody will care if I step out of my pants. It was an empty flight, just Nita and Susie and three men in suits. I almost stayed. It would have been the easiest thing in the world to have just buckled myself in. I can feel Leonard watching me. I turn and catch him at it. He doesn't look away. I glance at Marianne. She's noticed him looking. Something starts hatching inside me. The sea slaps the warm rocks, but only gently. I plop myself in and flip onto my back and let the waves bob me while I wonder at this thing that seems to come fully fledged with the power to wreak havoc. I squint up at them, all ranged on the ledge with the moon and the mountains behind them. I swim back to the ladder. <coughs> Little Booley crawls across the slippery wet rocks. The seawater makes his underpants droop like a nappy. Charmian's swimsuit does her no favours and is so worn out it's become transparent. Marianne is a silver sylph in a new yellow bikini. She's asking Charmian about a recipe for curry and hurriedly hands me her damp towel so that I can cover up. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, yes, we'll be doing a Q&A in a few minutes, so keep your questions coming in, like, share, push the emoji button, etc. Um, so one of the things that people really seem to have responded to about your book is that it does have this... Um, almost like a power of teleportation to put people on Idra in 1960 and I think 
it's not just because of this strange moment we're living through where people can't really leave their homes. Yeah. You, it, it, you know, I noticed that when I read it months and months ago. Um, and I think it's partly because of how intensely you researched the book and you really placed yourself there. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that helped you do that was this incredible series of photographs of Leonard Cohen and Marianne and various other characters yeah. there. Perhaps you could tell yeah. us a bit about that and about um, how that leads into the song. Yeah. That we're about to okay. Hear. We are about to hear a song, and it was one of the bits of the research that was sort of, in a way, the most rewarding were these photographs, which were taken by a photographer called James Burke who had been living in Athens in 1960 and had sold the idea for a story to Life magazine about this amazing bohemian colony living on Idra, which at that point was about a four or five hour ferry crossing by steamer from Athens to Idra. And he had gone several times in 1960 and taken photographs. And I mean, although we now think so many of this colony are famous, I mean, in particular, Leonard Cohen, I mean, at that point, Leonard Cohen was a 25-year-old poet. He'd written one collection of poetry and was there to work on his first novel. And there were other people internationally known now, but possibly ju then just sort of it fledging. Um, the the best-known people were actually the photographer's best friend, George Johnston, who he had... He, been a war correspondent all through the 40s and in th particularly throughout Asia with and his wife the amazing Charmian Clift and um, <laughs> uh, in a way the, the sort of most incredible piece of research was when I got hold of the contact sheets and there are over 1500 photographs and I don't know we, uh, there are some which are quite famous mm. and um, I don't know whether you need or that? Shall I go and show one to the camera? Or you need a John Stewart? Can. So, I mean, many people will know... Just take, yeah, take, take them all. Take them all. Um, so, we'll know some of these photographs because they are often used when people talk about the first concert that Leonard Cohen gave, which was under this tree. And you will know some of these pictures. Um, and actually, in this collection, there are several hundred of these pictures taken under the tree. And next to Leonard Cohen, you will see... Charmian Clift, and the other members of the community all ranged around. And so one of the first things I did was to immerse myself in the pictures and work out who everyone was and what their relationships were. And then the next thing I wanted to do was to work out what it was that Leonard might have been playing. And I came up with this. It's, it's, although it's a song that is on a later album, the poem exists in an earlier form. David, From going? way back then. From way back then. Well, in the 60s. So, it, it, And you can really imagine this one being played under that tree in the taverna and all of those amazing people joining <coughs> in as Len Cohen, 25-year-old, played. Yeah. Okay. So it's got a bit you can join in. If you like. You'll get it. <laughs> oh, Joy, we'll all be joining <laughs> in. <laughs> touched you once too often Now I don't know who I am My fingerprints were missing When I wiped away the jam Yes, I call my fingerprints all night But they don't seem to care The last time that I saw them They were leafing through your hair Fingerprints 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 Yes, I thought I'd leave this morning So I emptied out your drawer A hundred thousand fingerprints They floated to the floor You hardly stop to pick them up You don't care what you lose And you don't even seem to know Whose fingerprints are whose Oh, fingerprints 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 Take me down the aisle 
You want to throw confetti fingerprints? You know that's not my style. Oh sure, I'd like to marry you, but I can't face the dawn with any girl who knew me when my fingerprints were on. Fingerprints, 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 fingerprints. Where are you now, my fingerprints? Fingerprints, 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 fingerprints. Where are you now, fingerprints? So that was Thank Finger you. Prince by Leonard Cohen. Now, uh, oh no, okay, ignore that. Um, <clears throat> so now uh, on to the questions round of the show. Um, quick fire round. We're going to uh, try and answer as many questions as we can. So get your questions in. We'll be taking some that were submitted before the thing, but if you do them now, uh, we'll also answer your questions so far away about the book and, you know, whatever, really. <laughs> Mostly about the book. <laughs> to be honest. On topic questions, please. So let's get to have some from Facebook. Um, Christine Stansfield. Hello, Christine. Christine says, I've just finished reading your book and I am missing the characters and the island. I don't want to move on. How long does it take you to move on and be able to write another book with a completely different storyline and characters? Oh, I can't imagine writing another book at the moment. Um, I still wish I was writing this one. I had so much fun writing it. And in fact, um, the, um, there is a shed just over there where I still almost imagine my characters still live there because that's where all my research materials are. And during this lockdown, I have, even though I finished writing the book, you know, most days gone and sort of sat in it and thought about them and I still dream about them so I can't you know I mean I mean there will come a time but it's not not yet mm. I'm still very much in it Steve Pierce hello Steve says didn't think I would get a copy in lockdown but my son managed to get one online and it was signed did you actually sign these books? Brilliant <laughs> if you did, Polly. Yes, she did. Did yes. you actually sign these I books? I actually did sign these books. And I can tell you that, that there are still signed copies at a wonderful bookshop called Newham Books. Um, they're on Twitter. Um, and another bookshop called Much Ado Books, which is quite local to here. And they have signed copies, and I've signed them all myself. And they both bookshops do wonderful work in their own communities, and I would thoroughly recommend getting them from them. Lee Preston says, You're a great writer, and the book is speaking for itself, but please tell me that tune David was playing at the start. Ah, well, that tune is um, for actually for a song that, that grew out of this book. And which was supposed to be premiered this week when we were doing our shows at, at Central Hall Westminster and other places. But we could never complete the song because the lockdown happened. And so there are missing parts, but he still plays bits of it. And we can't wait for everyone to hear the whole song. Lovely. Well, it did start as the theme music yes. for your uh, cover reveals and yeah. things like that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what it was originally mm. written for, but then it became a song. Mm. Eleni in Leeds says. I've always thought the 60s were a time of liberation and freedom, but this doesn't seem to be the case for the women in your novel. Why not? Oh, because it's, um, the novel is mainly set in 1960, and the 60s didn't begin until 64, or certainly it didn't begin until women had access to, to the contraceptive pill, and also, you know, in, even in the 60s, women couldn't have in financial independence. Um, it was not until 1970 that Germaine Greer, for example, wrote The Female Eunuch, and I'm not sure what date it was that women were able to get things like a bank loan or to get a flat of their own without some guarantor by a husband or a father. Um, and so, yes, the 60s, it's a bit of a myth that women had great equality. They really didn't, and in fact, in many ways, they still don't. Right. That's that question answered. Next question, Tony Taylor Helser. Hello, Tony Taylor Helser. Is there any part of the story that you took from anyone in your life, 
no details necessary. <laughs> so well, I guess that's a yes or no. Yes or no. Kind of, yes kind or of no. sometimes, <laughs> occasionally, though David was about 12 in 1960. How old were you in 1960? Um, 14. 14. So of no use to me at all, because um, I, I really needed someone a bit older. Rob Maniam, <laughs> sir. Did you write the book on the island? If not, do you have a special place for writing in silence alone or with help from family? God, no, absolutely no help from family. <laughs> um, even the dog isn't allowed in. I mean, they help, obviously, in research and things, but the writing bit, I have to be completely silent. I work in a shed, but actually with this book, I had an incredibly lucky other place where I wrote, which was in the house of Charming Cliff on Idra, where she wrote so many of her books and where George Johnston another character in the book wrote his so that was fantastic okay, thank we, you Michael Pelicanos if you're watching we're getting lots and lots of questions coming in live we're going to be moving on to those very soon keep them coming in Got lo we see lots of great questions coming in live so thank you for those a practical question from Christopher Bowman how do you order a copy uh, thank you um, so yeah uh, go on well, how do you order I, I, a copy? There, uh, I think Waterstones has copies Amazon has copies and uh, as I've said Newham Books and Much Ado books both have signed copies yeah. and I would thoroughly recommend and getting them all, from them. all these links are on your Facebook page, Polly Sampson. I think they are. Uh, yep. Yeah, I hope and, they are. And your Instagram and things, yeah. yeah. Yes, they are. Uh, so we'll move on to some questions from Twitter, then we'll go in a few minutes on to some live questions. Tamsin on Twitter says, uh, uh, how did you go about planning and structuring a theatre for dreamers? Absolutely loving it so far. Thank you, Tamsin. Quick, quick answer. How did I go about structuring it? I don't know. It, 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 it had All right, next questions. question. <laughs> Deb Rose, after your brilliant research, um, is there a part of you that's sad that it's over? God, next... so sad. I love yeah. being lost in it. Right. I'd like to still be lost All in right, it. All right, next question. <laughs> Christine in Athens says, what drew Leonard Cohen to Idra and what led him to stay? Um, what drew him was the idea of somewhere sunny and beautiful to write a novel where there was really cheap rent and what led him to stay actually was Charming Clifton George Johnston who taught him everything about writing and how to live on a Greek island and be a writer according to him according to Leonard himself yes he um, credit, credits him with that Larry Kerrigan says hello did, Larry hello Larry did the large lot of Leonard Cohen letters that were recently auctioned help you in creating your characters they didn't actually because they, they were auctioned after I'd finished writing but what I had to then do was read them and check that all my research was correct and thank the lord it was. <laughs> um, Sarah, Sa Sarah Gwyneth Hook, what was the most difficult part of writing this book? Oh, no, no, no most difficult part. I loved every minute. My heart used to beat faster every time I walked into my shed. Okay, we're going to move on to some live questions now. Uh, I mean, with, right, we've got with you leaving your books behind, you're, a, you're the only method writer I've yes. ever heard of. <laughs> so it's like you're losing a person. Yes, no, it's true that I do have to sort of walk around as my characters. And um, so it's, it's very hard to cast off the skin of Erica, who is my narrator. Okay. We've, got, we've got, okay, we're going on to the live, <laughs> the live questions now. How many, Gabriel, how many, where are we get? where are people watching from? How many people are watching right now? Uh, 4.6,000. Uh-huh. And from all over from the world. From all over the world, amazing. Thanks. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Um, we hope you're enjoying this obviously <laughs> i'm going to move on to some of your live questions now jerome bordier in paris says when did you start the first words of the book specifics please oh my goodness no the very I can't. first words okay, well the very first words actually were probably um just before leonard cohen died and i was finding it so difficult um because i felt completely hamstrung by the idea that i might run into him Val Wolf, are Polly's photographs featured in the book? No, there no. are no photographs, Next. it's a novel. Steve Gervais, Polly, you write well and read well too, thank you. That's more of a comment oh, than a question, thank Steve. You. Thank you, thank you, I'm not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy Clark, what's Charlie? No, next one. <laughs> uh, Philippe Antognini, hi, Polly, David and Family, did you ever consider participating in a Netflix reality show? No. Um, <laughs> Isabel Ashwin, do you miss writing the book now that it's finished? I think we've answered that one. Um, Christine Terbije, does Idra still have an active artist bed hopping community oh, and God. vibe? I wouldn't know about the bed hopping. There's certainly a lot of artists, and I suspect that some of them do like to hop. Jan Bredvik from Denmark. 
Hello, Jan, says hi. Which book is next to your bed and which record is on your turntable? That's a question mm. for both of you. Well, we never listen to anything but Leonard. I'm afraid that that really has sort of stuck, hasn't it? It's been yes, years. I'm afraid, yeah. We're kind yeah. of addicted at the moment. Yeah. It's and, um, sort of one-track mind people. Yeah. And that one track goes on. For What's the favourite Leonard song or album? In it that changes case? all the time, yeah. my what favourite. Does. All right, what's I've, it right now? Um, Going Home is one of the that, that I very much mm. like. What album is that from? God knows. Old Ideas. Know. Old Ideas. Old Ideas. Yeah. All right. Uh, and your, what's the book next to your bed? The book next to my bed at the moment is Anne Tyler, and also a wonderful novel called Magpie Lane by Lucy Atkins, which arrived today. Ricky Rumblo. What's your dog's name and oh. breed? My daughter, come here, Bujum. My daughter is desperate to know. Sit, his so, name is Dum Dum. <laughs> he's not called Dum Dum, he is called Babunia, and his breed is um, really quite unknown. It's, he's such a mixture. Uh, but he's a rescue dog, as all the really great dogs are. Uh, Rita Rezende and says. He's not a dum dum. So he's a bit no, of a dum dum. He's not a dum dum. He's so clever. Rita Rosende, will Romney consider a career as a singer? No. No. There you go, Rita. Um, Thank you, Rita. <laughs> she should no. consider it. I mean, she should do... Oh. She should do whatever she wants. She should do whatever uh, she wants. That's Gabrielle what Childers says, which of Leonard Cohen's songs was the one that first brought him into your heart for Polly and David? Oh, God, into my heart. The first one for me was Suzanne, obviously, way back in the... Whenever it was, 68 or something. I couldn't, I couldn't name one song, actually. Sorry. All right, never mind. But they go in and out of favour. Yeah, yeah. Mm. but no, the first one into one's heart is a really good question. What would it be your Leonard... I mean, this seems to be quite... People just want some Leonard yeah. Cohen top tips. What are your sort of Leonard Cohen top five? <gasps> Not that the book is even really about Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen sort of <laughs> wanders in and out of yes. it um, in this quite amazing way. Yeah. yeah. I like this smoky life, and um, I like came so far for beauty, and go no more a roving, and the window. God, I love the window at the moment. I mean, it would be different every day Avalanche. that you ask me. Avalanche, I love. I, actually, I really like songs of love and hate. Quite often, the ones I love are the ones I didn't love when I first heard them, and then they just grow on me. Which, which is and vice versa. Some of the ones that we used to absolutely really love, we can't quite be bothered with anymore. That's not true. I, I, there are none that I can't be bothered with. Mm -hmm. Gabriel, how are we doing for time? <laughs> how, how much longer have we got? Uh, how? We've been going for about half an hour, I think. Okay, oh, right, I think, okay. I think, well, I think probably like 25 if you, Okay, all right. If you've got any more questions, get them in now. This is your last chance for questions. Fire away. I'll just ask a couple while anyone who thinks of any questions gets them in. Uh, thank you, everyone, again for watching. This has been great fun. Uh, Can I say hello to Lola, who may be watching, who is has been very ill and is all alone and is one of the people who was with me on the journey of writing this book and I'm just sending her lots of love and I'd also like to thank all the literary bloggers who I think have done an amazing job at this moment of keeping everyone in touch with books and you know at a time when we can't wander into bookshops their role is absolutely key and I'm incredibly grateful to them for all the wonderful reviews that they've given this book thank you thank you it's definitely made um uh, all the, 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 the lovely reviews and comments have definitely made me happy. been lovely for her and also made our lives much easier <laughs> as, as well. Uh, yeah, so thank you for yeah. that. We're yeah. all trapped here together <laughs> and it would be unpleasant <laughs> if it were the other way. <laughs> um, Pavel uh, Kriunin, who are all these people? Could you introduce them? <laughs> yes. So this is... Polly, my mum, <laughs> Samson, who wrote this book. Uh, everyone else introduce... Who, you yeah. do the introductions. No, you do the introductions. Okay. You're doing so well, Charlie. Uh, this is Popsicle. Oh, this is, this is Romany. <laughs> this is Yelena. Who is Charlie's wife. Who is my wife. And this is Alinka, who is our child. And Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel's... Gabriel, Gabriel's, come and give a thing. Gabriel's, Gabriel's tape support. <laughs> Gabriel's in charge of tech. Yeah, yeah. this is Gabriel. If, if it's not coming out in stereo, it's Gabriel's fault. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of the end of the question round. Yeah. So you didn't introduce me. Oh, and Romany. We did introduce we did. you. Oh, okay. Just uh, introduce me twice. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, end, of, end of the questions. Thank you, everyone, for your lovely questions and comments. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading the book. Thank you for reading the book. If you haven't bought a one, you should buy a one. You buy a one. <laughs> or a two. <laughs> buy one for a friend. 
Um, or, or borrow one yeah. from a friend. Buy one for a friend. Actually, you can't because yeah. you can't go anywhere. Um, and now here's another song. Why? Why are we having this song? This is uh, well, this our is a way of saying goodbye. But it's also Leonard, what, a song that is uh, sort of relevant because it's in the relationship with Leonard and Mary. I loved you in the morning. Our kisses deepen more. Your hair upon the pillow like a sleepy golden storm. Yes, many loved before us. I know that we are not new. The city and the forest, they smile like me and you. But now it's come to distances and both of us must try. Your eyes are soft with sorrow. Hey, there's no way to say goodbye. I'm not looking for another as I wander in my time. Walk me to the corner, our steps will always run. You know my love goes with you. Your love stays with me It's just the way it changes Like the shoreline and the sea Let's not talk of love or chains And things we can't untie Your eyes are soft with sorrow Hey, that's no way